Welcome everybody here to the Lakers Lounge. I'm Anthony Irwin. Today joined by uh, somebody who, after that LeBron James press conference, um, I immediately, it, it, his name immediately jumped to mind. And apparently he felt the same way. He texts me, God, I love this league, essentially. And I was like, well, I was just about to reach out to you, George Sedano of ESPN, to, 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 to have a conversation about what's going on there. And you, um, being the incredible guest and, and good friend of the show that you are, go, all right, you good tomorrow? You want to do this tomorrow? Perfect. Absolutely. Uh, George, thank you very much for making time for us uh, during this really busy time of the year and, uh, and, and for essentially just signing up to be the, the, the show's LeBron translator. <laughs> Uh, you know, I appreciate it. If, uh, if that's what I got to do, that's what I got to do. If that's how I got to make hay, <laughs> that's how I got to make hay, you know? Um, all right. So, you know, the Lakers get swept and LeBron plays 47 minutes and 55 seconds yeah. in the final elimination game. After uh, that game, he, I mean, throughout the game, he looked exhausted at various points, as you would expect. Like, you have 28-year-olds who 48 minutes in an elimination game, that would be really pushing it for them, right? Well, to your point, remember when Tibbs did that in the second round against the Heat where uh, Jalen Brunson and Quentin Grimes both played 48 minutes? Yeah. And they're young, and they looked exhausted, right? <laughs> yeah. And everybody was like, what is he doing? How is he playing them these many minutes? Like, it's insane. Yeah, uh, and and LeBron is, is more than a decade their senior, and... Um, you know, there was a play where Jamal Murray, it's like end of the shot clock. LeBron picks him up in isolation, moves his feet. It actually kind of forced us to look back on what he did to Derrick Rose in that one series, right? Where he took it upon himself to guard him the year Rose won an MVP that should have been LeBron's. Um, LeBron defends him in that moment, forces a really tough shot. Jamal Murray is like complaining to the referee saying that he got hit on the back of the head. And like normally in that spot, LeBron's kind of like laughing at yeah. at and those. Said, no, complaints. I got all balls. Is what he said. <laughs> well, well, but like as that's going on though, as as Murray is sitting there complaining, LeBron has his hands on his least knees, just like, <sighs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you know. And and he did like he did kind of go back and was like, no man, I got all balls. Yeah. You know, stop it. But like as he was saying, like no. <gasps> I got a ball, you know, yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. and, and yeah, again, listen, I, it, you're right. You forget <laughs> to your point. Right. And I was there for that 2011, um, Eastern conference final when LeBron took Derrick Rose for those last six minutes yeah. um, and, and eliminated him basically. Um, but you forget in 2011, LeBron is 26 years old. Okay. <laughs> yes. And I was there by the way, when, uh, you know, after the Ray Allen shot, people forget that the inbound after that, after they reviewed it, was to Tony Parker, and LeBron had to guard Tony Parker, <laughs> yeah. uh, who was even more shifty potentially than than Derrick Rose in certain ways. Um, yeah. But again, fast forward, that is twenty eight year old LeBron. Now we're thirty eight. Thirty eight year old LeBron, okay, <laughs> guarding Jamal Murray on the perimeter, doing a really good job on Jokic. Okay, yeah. in the post, I, honestly, I know that he was running out of gas, particularly on the offensive end, but for as great as he was offensively in the first half, 11 of 13 for the 31 points, I mm -hmm. thought he was equally as brilliant in the second half on defense, even though he only had nine points. Yeah, it was kind of, and, and, and you know, it's kind of why the Lakers offense stalled out, right? Like he carried the offense in the first half and then, you would hope that you know at some point the the all world pterodactyl that's standing next to him would would join the events, um, and and we had to wait like they went to Tristan Thompson like there's a lot that we can get into from that game but anyway I, I it's funny so before the games I was doing sidelines for ESPN Radio mm -hmm. and before just like on TV same deal we get the coaches for a few minutes off camera or whatever you know or mm -hmm. whatever. And I asked Darvin before he left, I said, you know, any changes today? And he's like, oh, I got a lot of changes today. And I was like, yeah, uh, maybe I don't I don't want to mischaracterize. It. I don't think he said a lot. He's got I got some changes today is what he said. Yeah. Um, so and I was like, "Ooh, OK. <laughs> and then immediately I found out. I, I mean, I kind of knew the starting lineup one was going to be one like you kind of yeah. assumed it was going to be Schroeder and Rui. I did not see the Tristan one coming, though. And when he <laughs> said I have I have some changes coming. Um, 
you know, I was that one stunned me. But Tristan played well. Yep. I don't think he played poorly. I think he got the Lakers and the crowd back into it. They yeah. were down seven points, and he had that dunk. Um, uh, you know, the, there was an and one. He wound up missing the free throw, or whatever. But yeah. yeah, that that moment, he's like screaming at the crowd to get back into it. The crowd does get back into it. The Lakers get back into the game. Um, yeah, I thought I thought he did uh, perfectly fine. And you know, like you mentioned, like the adjustments. I wonder if more coaches <laughs> would like to have the potential adjustment of play LeBron James 48 minutes. Like that would be a nice card to be able to pull yeah. out of your, yeah. out of your deck. Hey, listen, <laughs> I, I, I've seen some coaches do it. Uh, you know what yeah. I mean? So I, I think that, that it's certainly one card that you can play. I just was stunned to see it uh, at 38 personally, but listen, yeah. and with Tristan, you know, I, I will give him credit. I was at the games in Denver and I was doing my ESPN LA radio show from there. So I was literally right on the floor where the Lakers would warm up hours before the game. And he was out there putting in the work, um, getting himself ready. And mm -hmm. so was Malik Beasley, by the way, even though he did not get uh, any real run. Um, but I, I was like looking at them and I was like, man, those are pros right there because you know, their number may not be called and it's more than likely they weren't. At least that was my mindset at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but they are going through this like they were going to play a game um, and play 30 minutes. So those guys deserve some love in that scenario. And I don't know anything about the Kardashian world. I, I mean, other than like the headlines we see. Um, but I like Tristan Thompson, man. Like I, I, I have had really good interactions with him <laughs> in my yeah. time. And it's even more so, certainly with my time with the Lakers, um, with him in a very recent, you know, in that very short amount of time. So I, I'm a, I've become a fan of him as a basketball player. I get why the Cleveland fans loved him the way they did. He was a huge part of them winning a championship, right? Yeah. He absolutely owned Al Horford. Um, but uh, yeah, I. Anyway, so the, the game plays out the way that it does. LeBron is is very, you know, introspective. They're at the podium. Mm, um, that's one and, way to say it. <laughs> yeah, well, and then, and then, well, he was that, I thought, before the quotes that set the world on fire, right? Like, I thought, like, he was just kind of, I, like, I really love the moment where he kind of joked about Jokic making that shot twice, right? Yeah. Uh, that, you know, and he literally takes his hat off and just goes, hey, man, you know, you fuck <laughs> you know um and then and then you know a few minutes later at at the very end of his of his uh press conference you get the clip that uh, now everybody has seen and heard where he talks about his future in the game and stuff right and you know after that happens you have chris haynes tweet out a report that you know in a, a, a story in which uh lebron is according to him considering retirement but like I read that, literally read it, scammed through it on the air. I realized like, uh, I mean, okay, yeah, not not much else to it. Right. And then and then Dave Big McMenamin Minimum. fires yeah. off the tweet yeah. uh, in exchange that he had with LeBron. And he did ask a couple follow-ups that and got LeBron on the record for those uh, follow-ups. And, and LeBron does in that moment say, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to walk away. And that was, um, you know, that that uh, poor Denver. <laughs> yeah, Michael Malone was already furious that he wasn't getting any attention. Here's the guy he used to coach with or coach uh, back in the day. Yeah, He's feeling all his sunshine at this point. <laughs> so, <laughs> any 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 consideration that we were going to spend today celebrating Denver flew out the window. No. And and yeah, like I said, at, you know, I was on the air. You were you were there at the arena. You send me a text. All right, we got to talk about this. And yeah, I'm just gonna well, get out of your funniest, way. The funniest part of all of this mm -hmm. was as after it happened, and I like I'm like when he said it, it took me a second. And I was like, is he <laughs> did he just he may not play next year? And yeah. then I look and I'm, and then he walked off. I mean, he was because yeah. the the PR person had already said that was the last question, and I was kind of like, 
wait, we're not going to get to follow up on that? Like, yeah, he's just gonna it was literally off, like those movies. Away. It was like those movies where yeah. like, you know, yeah. it, it, what what like people think of as scrums in those moments where yeah. like they they drop the mic or whatever. And then yeah. you hear the reporters like yelling after him. Hold on. Wait, yeah. come back. Well, and, and then you saw a couple of guys sprint out. And um, so I looked at Mike Trudell, everyone's favorite sideline reporter. And yep. I said, well, that's a hell of a cliffhanger. Jeez. I mean, yeah. was, and then we just kind of were like both looking at each other like, okay. You know what? He's not my favorite sideline reporter. George, you're my favorite sideline reporter. That is very kind of you, but my yeah. favorite sideline reporter is Mike Trudeau. So. Well, he said his favorite person's Harrison, so I can't I can't meet him halfway there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, so, so um, yeah, I, I it was just, it was, you know, it was funny because 15, 20 minutes earlier in the show, I was telling Raj, you know, this run was spectacular. I thoroughly enjoyed all of it. The what the Lakers were able to do going from starting two and ten and then being the 13 seed a couple weeks before the playoffs started, fighting their way into, into the play in, winning the play in, winning those first two rounds handily and getting here. Um, you know, that was that was something that you know I'm I'm always going to really enjoy. And also, by the way, what makes it even more special is they have some real avenues here to really improve their team. Yes. Um, and and like not just in terms of like the personnel that is on the team, but also in terms of like continuity, something that Rob Polinka in his um exit inter- interview just now really hammered home how how the Lakers want to maintain that continuity, keep their core together. Obviously, Darvin Ham is coming back. Um, so you have that young players, right? I saw that quote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, so in that moment, I'm thinking. Yeah, there's a lot to like about the the Lakers' immediate future here, and then LeBron <laughs> LeBron fires off that curveball, and and yeah, I I you know Raj and I were on the air, just kind of like dumbfounded, reacting to it. So how how are you looking at those quotes? I, I think there's a few pathways to take here, right? Either he was just exhausted, which same, um, he's looking at his future and is it worth it to play this upcoming season and then, uh, you know, try to stay ready for whenever Bronny gets drafted? Is he applying pressure to the Lakers to try to go out and get specific help that he has his eye on? Um, or is he looking outside of LA? So like th- that, I think are the four pathways that you can kind of look at this from, um, w- which, where, where do you find yourself landing in that along that spectrum? So I think it's a combination of a lot of things, right? Like like yeah. anything else in life, right? If we were just kind of assigning, like if this was like some sort of pie chart, right? Um, I would say that, you know, there's probably like five or 10% where this is a real thing that he could just retire, right? I'm not going to summarily dismiss it. He's 38 years old. Yeah. And he's now going into a situation where physically – He's been deteriorating the last couple of years. Yep. And I'm a big believer in the biggest predictor of future injury is past injury. And Mm -hmm. I think he knows that too. So you're not going to just get more healthy as you get older. And, you know, he's got two busted wheels that he's played with where he missed time there. And I don't know this to be true, but I'm assuming there could be some procedural stuff that he has to do regarding his body. Right. Um, At the very least, there's going to have to be some, evaluations with doctors <laughs> about his status uh, physically. So I don't know if surgery is part of the deal or not, but I mean, I would imagine it at least has to be a possibility, even if it's a remote one um, there, if that is indeed the case, there's probably a rehab assigned to it, right? Mm-hmm. Do you want to go through all that stuff? Which by the way, he hasn't really ever had to do. <laughs> so yeah. I think all those things are at play. And, that's and also, by the way, like get all that done in time, hopefully for training camp yeah. to be able to maintain that continuity like that has to that has to be done on a schedule. Correct. A hundred percent. So I think that there's there's the possibilities of all that stuff. And you have to kind of take that into account. I think clearly he's emotional after a game and a tough loss. They lost in the last possession of the game. They got swept. You know, he's only been swept two other times in his career. And one of those was Kevin Durant, right? And the other one was he was a child going up against Tim Duncan and the Spurs in the finals. And the other part of the equation is this. He summed up everything he could in that game. Yeah. And it wasn't enough, Mm -hmm. right? And I think 
you know, even with the KD Warriors thing, like that was just, you know, we know that was kind of like the deck stacked against him and everyone yeah. for that matter, mm-hmm. right? So he, you know, he had 50 points in game one in that famous J- or infamous JR game, right? Yeah. Um, where he didn't know the score. And it was like, holy moly. Like he, that's why he broke his hand in that series. He knew I'm done. Like we're done here. Like, yeah. Um, and I think that it's been very rare in his career where he has summed up all that, right? Yeah. And that it hasn't been enough. So I think in anything, not just basketball, he's been incredibly successful all over the place. Correct. But let's just keep it to basketball for now. It's very rare that he sums up. Although Space Jam was a little long. Maybe, (laughs) maybe work a little harder on the edits. Um, But in, (laughs) uh, in basketball terms, it's very rare that he has some, that he has summed up all the energy and come up short for one game. Right. Yeah. And that kind of also lends to perhaps someone looking towards their mortality from a basketball yeah. perspective. So I think there's just all these things at play. I know there are some people that think that maybe it's a ploy to get changes that he wants on the roster. I'm not summarily dismissing that either. Um, yeah. I would probably put it, you know, I, I wouldn't put it as like the biggest piece of the pie chart, um, but maybe, I mean, again, this man, I've said it, and I mean this as respectfully as possible, and I mean it as a compliment, to be honest with you. This man knows every single syllable that comes out of his mouth 99 yep. out of 100 times, okay? It's very rare he speaks off the cuff where he doesn't have this thing in his head already mapped out to some extent, okay? Yeah. Um. So when he says things, he knows the weight of his words. So I, I do think may, that could be a part of it, but I just think emotion is probably the biggest part. Um, seeing that he mustered up everything he could and it wasn't enough, um, particularly in that game. And, you know, I, I think maybe the, the, the roster stuff, uh, leverage stuff, whatever you want to call it, as like a smaller piece of the pie chart, like 15 20%, and then like 10% that he could actually just retire, that he just may be tired, you know? Yeah. Tired I am of seeing my face and Dave McMiniman's face and everybody else's face, you know? I'm a year younger than him, man. My my feet just like pop. I'm not younger like, it's than just... him. I'm older than him. <laughs> you know, I just I I would if if retirement was on the table for me, I wouldn't be here. I could. <laughs> I could. Yeah. If, um, I t- if you told me that that now I get it. I say this, and I probably I I probably wouldn't be able to do it. I mean, I I, I feel like I yeah I, I know you. I I yeah, would semi I retire. I take like three months off and then find the energy to find something new. But you, you, you'd have like, instead of 73 jobs, you'd, you'd cut it down to like a clean 65. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And look, I, it's, you know, so one of my, you know, this one of my close friends in the business, Dan Levitard, he took a year sabbatical once. And mm-hmm. that was before he started the radio show. I want to say it was like 03, 04 in that range. Mm-hmm. And he left the newspaper for a year and went and then eventually came back and did the radio show. And that, you know, it's been, you know, you know what's happened ever since. But, um, yeah. And, you know, I, I was just talking to my wife about this the other day. I had one like minor sabbatical because in Florida, we don't have unions like they do in California. So they had non-competes and I had to mm. sit out for three months for a non-compete while getting paid. Yeah. And I got to be honest, it was nice. It was <laughs> nice. It was nice for three months. But by the end of the third month, I was ready to get back to work. So yeah. I, I, I do. It's why when Bra- Tom Brady did the retirement, unretirement, then retired again thing. I get it. I don't, and I don't live in their stratosphere, you know? So where you can't, you cannot replace the dopamine rush. It is to play professional sports, to be a rock star, to be uh, an actor, right? Like that stuff can't be replaced. And I'm on the absolute lowest rung of the totem pole in entertainment. Yeah. And I, and I see people in my business, it just consumes them. Um, yeah. so I, I get it. Um, but I do think sometimes you just, you know, some people are, are wiser than others and realize, you know, it's time to get out, you know, and maybe that's it. Yeah. I want to, um, there's a lot there, the, the retirement aspect of this and just like, and, and the way that people are kind of wired, I just don't see LeBron stepping away 
without it being a process, right? That's why, that's why like retirement to me, isn't necessarily really on like you, you put it at five to 10%. I would probably go like one to 5%, but you know, at that, at that low a percentage, like it, you we're, 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 we're not talking much difference there. Um, I just don't see LeBron, somebody who built up this platform for himself and did all of these things and, and has assumed so much power just like, and, and look, maybe the power is the ability to just step away, right? Maybe, maybe that is kind of how he's looking at this, but I, I just can't envision somebody who has made every aspect of his career, a documentary, essentially mm -hmm. like not giving himself a last dance, like not, not filming this la you know, his last season as his last season. So well, that's, I'll that's, this. there was a crew following him the entire playoffs. Well, shit. <laughs> and and so. that person that was following him was yeah. the same person who did the footage for Jordan. Yeah. Great. Um, now that's stuck in the back of my head. But you mentioned his um, his body and, and where it currently stands. So um, in the four years with the Cavaliers before he went to the Lakers, 69 games, 76 games, 74 games, 82 games. First season with the Lakers – 55 games next season is the highest he's played 67 games then 45 then 56 then 55 like we may not want to acknowledge it but that's his body pretty cleanly pretty pretty plainly saying no man like and 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 look in those games that he did play he's been spectacular by yeah. the stand by any standard and it's certainly by the age that he was doing that at the stand like at that standard but still like Part of why you can make the argument why he's missing so many games is because he's forcing himself to play at that standard in those games that he's appearing in. Yeah. And his body is pretty clearly saying, like, you don't, I, I don't think we have that anymore. And, and he said after the game that, um, you know, he's pretty confident he can get his body right if his head is in it. And I, <laughs> You look at the numbers, man. I don't know if that's necessarily he can be. He can get himself right to compete at a really high level, but how often he's going to be able to do that is is another you know conversation altogether. And again, like he just he just played his actual ass off in that game, forty point triple double, damn near in those forty seven minutes and fifty five seconds, and Insane his team defense, lost. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Defending the two time MVP and all that stuff. But Jokic, like the Nuggets are going to be there next year. The conference, like the, getting to the finals next year is going to go through Jokic. That's a difficult ask. Like that's, and he's looking at Anthony Davis, who, you know, played really good. I thought was the best player in the first two series. And then in, in this third one was pretty up and down. And he's kind of looking at AD like, man, I'm playing 48. You want to join me? <laughs> you know? And, and. Um, Jokic plays at AD's position and AD, you know, whether it, it, there was some tactical advantage to moving AD off of Jokic, but also Jokic was, you know, having his way because right. AD is so much smaller than, than he is. But and like Jokic and they figured that out in the last game. Um, yeah. you know, you saw Aaron Gordon go off where basically they had Aaron Gordon make the entry passes into Jokic and then. Mm -hmm. Um, when you know to combat AD being the floater, the free safety, right? Yeah. And then Jokic mm -hmm. would just lob it into him, and he had a bunch of easy dunks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they found a way to combat that whole Rui AD thing. Mm -hmm. And and so like eight, LeBron's looking around, and and he is significantly smarter in basketball terms than any of us, right? And he's looking around in that locker room. He's like, man, this is what I can do. If he, if if this is him leveraging this like topic to get more help, I get it. Honestly, Wait, like but would you, but the thing is, and, and I tweeted this and, it, and I knew when I tweeted it, it would get a lot of engagement, but mm -hmm. I tweeted when Kyrie, when I saw Kyrie sit down and immediately the, the, you know, the retweets and the quote tweets yep. and the responses were flowing. And, um, I, you know, I think the, it's interesting, like, because part of me says, if you bring Kyrie Irving with AD and LeBron, you probably have a good shot of winning that championship and getting through Jokic and those guys and whatever else the West gives you. Um, you have a better shot than you do right now. That's for sure. But while that team with those three and Austin Reeves, if it's the whole win horse scenario where, you know, it, Kyrie takes a little less and they can keep Austin Reeves or whatever, and they mm -hmm. have to figure out the rest after that. 
Um, I think that that team has an incredible ceiling, uh, really high ceiling, but a floor that can crack beneath you and literally just swallow you up, right? Like that's, yeah. and, and I, if it were me, and I don't think Kyrie would do this, I would only line him up with whatever AD's contract is. That that's that's what I would do. And yeah. I, I wouldn't like the end of this run is the end of this run kind of thing. Right. And then we figure it out from there. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, so the Kyrie thing, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds here, but essentially for the Lakers to have a chance at Kyrie, you are denouncing all of your free agents. You are completely clearing yes. the books. The only person that you could technically keep on the Max books Christie. is Austin Re is well, um, well, because you can't just lose Chrissy for nothing. So I mean, I mean, like all of the free agents that that the Lakers have decisions on this year, oh, and there are right. a lot of them. Yeah. Um, you basically have to tell all of them, "Thank you for your service. Best of luck moving forward." The only one that you could technically keep in that scenario is Reeves, right? Because his cap hold is so small that, yeah. um, you you know, Kyrie's going to be taking a, a pay cut anyway, so. You know, at that stage, and you can use bird rights to re-sign Reeves after yeah. you bring Kyrie yep. in. Yep, you um, go over the cap for him, right? And then essentially, what you do there is you have uh, one exception that you can utilize, and then you have all veteran minimum signings from there. And we have seen how having nine veteran minimum guys on your roster has played out for the Lakers these last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have an insane success rate, and you know, maybe four out of those nine guys pan out, but that's a crazy year. That's well, that's you know running real you, hot at the blackjack table. You, you know what else you could do? And mm. the Lakers have had some success with this. You have to hit on your draft picks. You yeah. have to mine the G League, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they've had success at that in the past. Maybe not to the level like Miami does, right? Where they, yeah. you know, it's just... I mean, they're insane. Well, there's you know voodoo I mean? magic that's going on there. I'm I mean, convinced. It, it, it might be. Uh, <laughs> but but you have to use that model, right? Like mm -hmm. their model is the one you have to utilize in that scenario. You have to mine talent. Yeah. Um, but even there, though, it's like hard to plan for that, right? It's hard oh, to plan yeah. on hitting on all of that stuff. Right. And, and like you're saying, like <clears throat> the nice thing about this, like what, what this run should have taught everybody and like the Lakers run back when they won a championship before is like having a bunch of really solid role players solidifies your floor. Right. And, and, you know, having the superstars, they're going to set how high your ceiling might be, right. but the, 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 you're, you're building a house on sand potentially there. And, and that it doesn't always, you know, pan out the way that it necessarily should. And, um, yeah, I, I, I still tend to think, and Rob Polinka echoed this, that continuity and keeping this core intact, at least for the for training camp and going into the season, and maybe you make some, make some tweaks over the course of the year as the Lakers path forward here. But I also understand, and, and look, I credit LeBron for this. He said after the game, I, I'm not happy to, I'm, I'm not going to pound my chest for getting to the conference finals. Yeah. That whole like Giannis response, right? So, Failure is just steps towards uh, success yeah. or progress, LeBron whatever had the it was. Complete opposite response there. Which Absolute is the response opposite. You should have. Yeah, and 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 like you know, he was basically saying, "No, I, I hold myself to a much higher standard than that. You have to." He's he's chasing ghosts, man. He's chasing Michael. Like you don't you don't like you don't pat yourself on the back for getting to the Western Conference Finals if you're pursuing Michael Jordan and that upper echelon of all time talent. And so, like, yeah, if 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 this was him kind of needling the Lakers to be like, hey, this was fun, this was cute, we made a nice little run here, can we just go get some stars, can we go, I can't really hold it against them. I, I disagree with the path forward. I think two stars and a bunch of really good role players is kind of the, the modern uh, model yeah. now. Yeah. But, but, like, I also, superstars don't think that way. They think yeah. of, give me somebody, it's, it's, it's like pickup. Get me three really, really, really good players, and those two other guys just rebound, <laughs> you know. And 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 and, and uh, knockdown shots, right? Yeah, like rebound, and 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 if I pass you the ball, don't mess up. And and I think, um, you know, if that's how he sees this, then then that's worth taking into account too. Um, the other two scenarios here that I like, I I, I also put in that one to five percentage rate, but I still can't not think about um, him 
going to the front office and saying, hey, this has played its course. Can we get me to a place where I can win a championship before I go and play in like Memphis with, with Bronny or whatever, not Memphis, they're going to be good. But can I, can you, can you, can you give me one more opportunity to go out and ring chase before we go and, and, and um, decide where I'm going to play based on who drafts Bronny? Right, what, what is the value of something like that? Winning a ring. Like if you win the no, ring no, no. or whatever. I'm talking about if you're the Lakers, like what are you actually getting him back? I mean, you could probably get a few, like couple to a few first rounders for him. And like in, in Kevin O'Connor's piece today, he wrote for the ringer, right. That um, outlined, you know, a trade essentially for all of the, the Warriors young pieces and like three picks um, so that LeBron can go and play with Steph in that core or whatever. Um, I still, the, 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 the contracts there would be kind of tricky still because LeBron is making 47 mil, but um, like there's that, there's that potential outcome here. And then the last one is is you know I, I don't see that by the way me like I, I like I said one to five percent probably closer to one, and then the the last one here that I can't like not think about is looking at Anthony Davis and being like, you know this guy misses a bunch of time, he didn't exactly make the best showing of himself in this in this final series. Maybe you start talking to him about hey man, wouldn't it be fun to go play in Chicago? Like, wouldn't it be, <laughs> like we we saw it with Wade, and he's way closer with Wade than he is with Anthony Davis, and where where he kind of like where, where right. Wade was but, with him but, in Cleveland, but, and he was, was like, hey, you know, Miami's kind of nice this time of year. That was old Dwayne Wade. That wasn't yeah. Anthony Davis under thirty years old. You know, Davis just turned thirty, and he's moving oh, well, worse than, <laughs> than worse than it, it, LeBron is right now. You know, like I I watch AD operate on offense and. I don't remember the last time he had one of those dunks where his elbows were above the rim. So it made me kind of wonder. And, and um, yeah, like one of the things that I'm going to be asking about when, when, when certainly when, if this extends all the way through to like summer league and stuff, when we, when we get there, one of those conversations I'm going to have is like, Hey, how, how do we see this LeBron and 18 AD thing playing out? And you were there on the sidelines for this. And, and by all means, shut me up if, if I need to be shut up here. But um, what what would you say the vibes were like as LeBron was playing all forty eight of those minutes and AD was just kind of like floating through an uh, elimination I game? Like they, their huddles were very similar to what they were most of the season. Um, there was initial communication with LeBron, AD, and the guys who were in the game. The assistant yeah. coaches would come over. Usually, one would come over and, and chit chat with them for a second, right? Uh, about kind of some of the thoughts that the coaching staff would have, and then Darwin would come over give them his thoughts and draw up a play. Um, now I've seen other huddles that are more vocal. I think Denver's huddle is always been more vocal. Yeah. Um, and certainly in this series, you got, everybody talks KCP, uh, Jokic, Porter, uh, mm -hmm. Gordon, uh, Deandre Jordan, right? Like guys, uh, constant, you know, communication from guys who don't play, who play. Um, it is one of more, the more vocal, uh, huddles that I've seen. But I think that you is know, DeAndre Jordan just telling people, "Hey, you know that rotation that you made? How'd you do that?" No, <laughs> don't be a jerk. Uh, DeAndre <laughs> Jordan actually, um, when I was listening to him, he was telling them, and I don't want to give away government secrets. So yeah, uh, but the stuff he was telling them made a lot of sense, and it actually ended up um, working. You know, um, so I, I do think that. They they did a lot of things, um, and this is something I can tell you that they I, I reported at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, when Jokic picked up his fifth foul. They wanted him to guard Rui, and they were going to have Gordon carry uh, or, or cover rather uh, AD. And mm -hmm. Jokic stopped them. He said, "Why?" And they're like, yeah. "Well, you're in foul trouble." And he's like, "No, no, I got AD." And yeah, you know, like I I think that you know LeBron and a I could now the difference was I could hear better from Denver's huddle. Yeah, because um, they were just louder um, and kind of like I was at more of an angle to their huddle so I could kind of see their faces, whereas yeah. LeBron and AD, their backs are towards me. So I couldn't see exactly what they were saying. I could see what the coaches were saying to them so I could kind of, you know, piece it together. Mm -hmm. um, but it was fascinating to just kind of watch the dynamics from there um, when you're in those huddles this time of year and just see what it's like. But, yeah, I, I think that I don't think like LeBron is down on AD. I mean – Maybe somewhere in his nether regions of his brain. Maybe. I don't know mm -hmm. that.
but I've never heard him do anything but give AD support publicly. Yeah, um, that's for sure. Privately, to be honest with you, um, mm-hmm. from my not to my knowledge. So um, that's why that one would surprise me. I am positive that you would really like Chicago. Like, <laughs> there's some positive reinforcement. Um, no, I, I like I said. Certainly, and especially like the 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 LeBron elsewhere scenario, like um, that would be that would really kind of strike you out of nowhere. And he, like to your point about the stuff that he has said publicly, he has been adamant about he is focused on finishing finishing this out with the Lakers. Whenever he does retire, he wants to do so as a Laker. Um, so I guess that's worth taking into account too. Well, I mean, if the Bronny situation is what he wants to do, then he wouldn't. I mean, there's a potential to not finish with the Lakers, but I actually think that, and I don't think this is going to happen either, but if we're going to do cockamamie ideas, um, I think him asking for a trade, I don't see that. Um, I don't think he sees himself as someone who would ask for a trade. Um, at least not. I mean, I know he's kind of Im- implied that when he said, earlier this season like i only play for championships or whatever that's yeah not here i'm here for blah 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 but you know it's still different than kind of what he said recently it just was a different tone obviously back then <laughs> um but i i think if anything and again this is like a zero percent chance this is happening this is just me coming up with a cockamamie idea i think there's more of a chance of him retiring sitting out a year and coming back yeah. and then at that point I'd have to look up the CBA rules, but I'm pretty sure he could do that. And if, as long as it's more than a year, he could then be a free agent, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and sign with whatever team Bronny, dra- you know, gets drafted to, and then just do the one more year after that. Um, yeah. But I think if I were thinking of which one, which cockamamie idea is more likely, him asking out for a trade or him sitting out a year and then just going to link up with Bronny and free agency, yeah. I think that one to me makes more sense. But by the way. It's why LeBron has a player option after next season. So because yeah. he wants to give himself that chance to play with Bronny. Yeah. Um, like I said, either of those scenarios are extremely unlikely, I think. Um, we talked we, we have a we, better we, chance of winning the Powerball than that happening. Either one of those. <laughs> uh, do, do you do you want to go 50-50 on a few tickets? Is that what you're saying? Because sure. I could why I could not? like I said earlier, I would love to retire. That would be really nice. Um yeah, I, I I think all of this is to basically say, um, and and I know that you know with LeBron, normally it is some calculation at play when he says something like this. But I really honestly think, and he is allowed to do this. He is still a human being. Yeah, he was exhausted. Yeah, you, you could just like see that. It. You I mean, listen, to- I I was up close in every huddle seeing him. Like he was. Yeah like exhausted and And like like, it was and and listen i've seen him obviously over the years in a lot of different spots and a lot of different games and a lot of different environments and a lot of different circumstances and i I can't recall one where i've seen him more exhausted you got to think about it like this he's playing on a bad foot he uh, he two bad feet um he has (laughs) He's, he's playing on the two bad feet. The Lakers have been sprinting towards the playoffs or, you know, basically sprinting or been at full sprint for months, plural now, because they had to do so to get into the playoffs. And you get in there and you're playing against a team in, in Denver that could take like the last month and a half off. So they're fresher and they have the more continuity and frankly, more talent on their roster. Yeah. And, and like, yeah, that's how a sweep looks. That's, that's what goes into a sweep. Yeah. And, and I think, LeBron, first time he's ever been swept. The first time, like you mentioned earlier, that he put every part of him into something. It's not and the didn't first time get... he's been swept. Two, he had two previous sweeps. He had uh, the Kevin Durant one, um, Golden State, and then oh, yeah. the 2007 against the Spurs in the finals. Um, first time in the conference finals he's been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's yeah. Um, and then you know it was the first time he put everything into something and didn't get the desired return. Right. right. Mm-hmm. But like that, 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 like under, under like fairly normal circumstances, right. Not counting the Kevin Durant thing. Correct. So, um, yeah, I, I, I as, as fun as, as it is to, to speculate on these things, I, I really do kind of just kind of land on 
he's he was wiped, man. And yeah, and when you're tired, you tired, when you're tired, when you're drunk, that's when the what's that's when that honesty comes out. Yeah, tired, emotional, etc. All right, before I go, I got like a minute yeah. here before I got to roll. Um, what do you do with D'Lo? I think well, they they have to resign him, and then I think As, they yeah, sign him uh, to like a, a two year yeah. deal. You know, in in the fifty to fifty to sixty range is what he'll probably get, and either they use that money and the draft pick that they're going to utilize this year on draft night, or or um, or the twenty nine pick, and they get him for you know they move him for somebody either then in this in this upcoming off season or at the deadline for somebody who can actually play in in a series against Denver because I don't think he can. Oh, I, I agree. I think that um, defensively, he's not good enough. And then offensively, if he's not hitting shots, he's not worth keeping out there defensively. And I just think his game, this probing game that he likes to do in the pick and roll game, and that stuff works in the regular season. Mm -hmm. um, and I think even in certain matchups in the postseason, it can work. But I don't think it works for I don't think it works for 16 games. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's part of the issue. And when you're paying someone that amount of money, they need yep. to be a, a someone you can count on for the 16 game season. Yeah. That, and, uh, the, the, my, my Homer, extremely Homer take is that, uh, Bamba and the pick on draft night and the 20, you know, the pick on draft night and a few second rounders for Caruso. Uh, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers for that. You we'll never know. That. You never know. Yeah. I, I listen. I bet you the Warriors will look into Caruso. So they better not. I <laughs> it was already tough enough to watch him win an award this year on not the Lakers. Uh, George, thank you very much for hopping on. It is always an absolute pleasure to talk this stuff with you. Um, and and it's 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 hilarious that we have arrived at a place where something like that happens, and we immediately jump to all right. We got to we got to we got to talk this out. So thank you very much for for uh, for that. And this, and uh, you can find him basically anywhere on ESPN, ESPN radio. He has, you still have your podcast. That's a part of that radio show. Um, uh, Sedano and cap is where you can find them on ESPN 710. Uh, anything else specific that you got to plug before we get you out of here? Uh, no, it's fine. Just follow me on Twitter at Sedano S E D. -A -N -A. I'm so jealous that you have that yeah. at Sedano. Like that Beyonce. is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have a great one, buddy. See you, man. Thanks for having me.